Your A1 3D printer is boring. Luckily, we can fix that pretty easily with some upgrades from Big Tree Tech. That's it, that's the whole intro, it's as simple as that. Today we're gonna be checking out some upgrades from Big Tree Tech to take your A1 from looking like this to something that's a lot cooler to look at and a lot more practical. We've got some cosmetic upgrades that are gonna tell you the status of your print and some practical upgrades that will actually make your A1 printer print better. Why wouldn't you want something like that? We're going to take a look at all of these products right here, individually unbox them, show you a very brief way to install them, and finally show you them in action because that's the whole point, right? You want to see what these things do and honestly, so do I because I haven't used these yet. So let's find out together if these upgrades from Big Tree Tech are worth your money and your time installing them. Up first, we're going to take a look at a couple of ways that you can make your A1 3D printer feel a little bit more like an H2D 3D printer. I'm not talking about dual nozzles, although that would be pretty cool. I'm talking about the Panda Aura and the Panda Status Bar. These two products add lighting effects to your A1 3D printer to indicate what's going on with your prints. There's different colors and flash patterns and progress bars to indicate if you have a print failure, a paused print, the progress of your prints, a completed print, an idle printer, and Honestly, a whole lot more. Those are just the main ones for me. First, we're gonna take a look at the Panda status because this is most like the H2D. In fact, it'll look just like it when it's done. Not the printer, but the light itself. I'm going in blind with you guys, so you are getting my true first impressions of these things. Let's get this thing out of the box, why don't we? And when we open up the box, we are greeted with some styrofoam, power cord, another cord, a little tiny controller for the Panda status, microfiber cloth, some 3M strips, and finally, the Panda status itself. All right, looks like there are no instructions in the box, so I'm gonna have to figure this one out on my own and then let you know what I come up with. All right, so it turns out that the instructions for the Panda status are actually fully online, so that's kind of cool. If you read those instructions, you'll find out that the installation is quite simple. It involves a 3D printed case for the motherboard. I guess you could call it a motherboard for the chip of this thing. Then you take that case and you tape it right to the side of your A1 3D printer. I feel like this is also a good time to mention that this works with the P1S as well. So if you have a P1S or an X1C, then guess what? This works for it as well, but you need to print out a different case. So just keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that there's going to be a P1S and an X1C version of this video. So just, you know, watch out for those upgrades too. Once you tape the control board to the side of your A1, you're going to want to slide that build plate all the way back, take off the build plate itself, give a good scrub, a good clean to the front front of the printer. Next we're going to peel back that 3M tape, tape it right to the front of the printer, and run the cable all the way back following the power cable to the main control board. That's it! And plug it in of course, but I feel like that's self-explanatory. I don't think I need to tell you that part. Also make sure to use the supplied tape to tape it to the actual bottom of the heat bed so it's not just dragging along your printer. The last step is to plug in the USB-C cable and let's see what happens. Right off the bat, looks like we have an idle animation. Nice little blue going from side to side here. I'm not mad about that whatsoever. I don't know why I'd be mad about it, but it is kind of cool. Once we have an actual print going on this thing, you can see that progress bar just slowly ticking away as the print progresses. Honestly, that is my favorite feature of the status bar and all of these status products is seeing the progress of the prints. It's one of the things I love most about my Prusa Core 1. Next, we're going to check out the Panda Aura for the A1 3D printer. The Panda Aura does the same thing as the Panda status bar. It gives you an easy way to let you know what's going on with your printer with an LED ring around the entirety of the printer as well as some audio alarm. So there's really no way that you're not gonna miss a failed print if you have this thing installed and you're home. Let's open up the box. And as usual, we are greeted with some styrofoam. Here's the control box and the alarm right here. A bunch of parts and the actual Panda Aura itself, which is cut out of a really nice acrylic. Again, no instructions for this one in the box, but they are online and easily accessible, so do whatever you want with that information. The Panda Aura installation is very similar to the previous installation that we just took a look at, except on the bottom of your printer. So what we're gonna do is flip this printer on its side, remove a couple of screws, and then replace those screws with the Panda Aura in between. After that, just like the last one, we're gonna tape our alarm box and also control unit to the side of the printer somewhere and then run our cables. And plug it in, of course, but it's that simple. That's the install for the Panda Aura. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing I had a little bit of a problem with is this magnet is not very strong, so it does not necessarily stick to the base like I would want it to. Probably gonna have to swap that one out for some 3M tape. Also, some cable management is definitely needed here. But besides that, Check it out. Now we got that idle light going on on our Panda Aura and our Panda status bar looking awesome. What I really like about the Aura compared to the status is the Aura plugs in directly to your AMS port. 
and that's how it gets its power, whereas the status bar needs a USB power. It's just kind of cleaner and more self-contained. Plus you have an extra AMS plug-in on your A1 anyways because you can't use two AMS units. So you might as well use it for something cool like this. All right, let's take a break of cosmetic mods for just a second and talk about something that is practical and might actually improve your print quality. This is the Panda Cooler A1 and it is designed to reduce the temperatures of your stepper motors. It is a plug and play upgrade that just pops right on the side of your extruder and it turns on automatically when you are printing and your printer is extruding and it turns off automatically when it is not. It also has RGB fan lights and RGB nozzle lights if you're into that sort of thing. I prefer more of the clean look without the RGB, but it's built into it, so it's there if you want it. Let's get this thing out of the box. Plastic styrofoam. Here's the actual fan itself right off the bat. Set that to the side. This looks like the LEDs if you're into that sort of thing. Here is a little USB-C board. I'm not quite sure how this works yet, but I'm sure we'll find out. And some screws, wires, washers, screwdrivers. And this looks like another bracket of sorts. Kind of looks like a USB goes in there, don't you think? Let's find out with a quick install. This installation is quite a bit more in depth. However, I'm just gonna breeze by it because I don't wanna bore you with all those details. So in a very quick sense, the install includes installing the nozzle lights, then installing the fan itself. Next, you're going to install the fan motherboard and that includes removing this cable right here and sending that cable through our 3D printed piece that came with this part. Then you have to get some power. So you're gonna use that little USB-C thing to get some power for this fan then plug it all in bam that's it real quick when you're installing this piece of the puzzle make sure you use the right screws i just recorded an entire couple minute long thing about how i wanted to be transparent and i couldn't get this thing to work right and this this whole long thing turns out i was using the wrong screws so just keep that in mind Installation is all done. Let's give this thing a first power up. We also have to connect this thing to the actual printer itself and, and that's a whole different ball game and it's on a computer. So just follow the instructions, connect it to the correct printer and you'll be good to go. It has come to my attention that I failed to mention that you actually have to connect all of these to your printer. I don't know how that just slipped my mind, but you do have to do that and then you can pick what you want the lights to do. So that entire time it has just been in pairing mode and they have not been paired. Once you do get them paired through the Wi-Fi, which the instructions are very easy to follow. You can pick what type of style you want the lights to do. I picked H2D style for everything because I wish I had an H2D. But if you don't want that, you can pick between static colors, breathing colors, strobe colors, pretty much anything you want. It's basically like you're building a PC with all those RGB lights and you can just choose whatever you want. I know we've done a lot of cosmetic upgrades in this video. Why not do one more while we're at it? This is the Pandanomi 3D. The Pandanomi on my A1 mini has been very popular from you guys in the comments so it's time that we check out the 3d version like the rest of them let's pop it open and it almost unboxed itself there that was kind of nice here we have the actual screen itself the cable that goes with it and some zip ties i really like that they included those the installation of this one is also a little bit more in depth but quickly you install the actual screen itself into the casing which i actually did not receive the casing with this one so i'm going to be using the one for my a1 mini and the standard pandanomi i hope it works with the 3d version but just I want to put that out there. Then you remove the front cover off of the A1. Next, you remove the little rotate spinny wheel thing. Not really sure what it does, but we got to get rid of it. Then we run our cables through so we can get some power to this thing. After that, just like the rest, we got to connect to it on our Wi-Fi and connect it to this specific printer and we're good to go. Now you can see we have our little character right here and he's just snoozing away because the printer's not doing anything. Why don't we give it something to do and see how everything looks all put together. Here we have everything in combination, all working together beautifully you can see we have our panda status bar showing us how close we are to the end of the prints we have our panda aura which is in the rainbow mode which means that it is currently printing we also have our panda nomi up top showing us that new screen that new face that i'm hoping you guys love with our percentage in the magnifying glass right there we're 84 percent done with this print we're getting there and that's about it it's just really cool seeing everything come together and work beautifully all together like this i will say adding those cables definitely added some weight to this so maybe we should work on like a tension system or something i don't know but that's kind of not my concern right now because it's not going to hit the build play so i'm okay with it we are nearing the end of this print i want to see everything light up green when this thing is done like it's supposed to just to confirm that everything is working appropriately all right finishing up bam there it is we got the panda aura that turned green is actually putting off a really nice glow 
We got the panda status up here also showing green. This one doesn't glow as much or put out as much light, but it's definitely there and easy to see. And finally, we have our little character guy just going back to snoozing because there's nothing for him to do right now. Okay, time for my final opinions on everything you're seeing in front of you right now. First off, Panda Aura. Does it work? 100% it does work. It gives you a great way to see what's going on with your printer at just a glance. However, the Panda Status Bar also does the same exact thing for a way cheaper price and it shows you the progress of your prints. It also is, in my opinion, a whole lot more clean, looks a lot more bamboo-esque if you know what I'm saying. Not that the Panda Aura doesn't look good, it just looks a little bit more like a PC RGB effect, which personally I'm not a fan of, but I know that there are plenty of people out there that are, so if that's what you're going for, then great, go with the Panda Aura. It shows you all the same things except for the progress of your print, which is something that I would have liked to see with it. Like I was saying, the Panda Status Bar shows you everything that's going on with your print for a cheaper price, a smaller footprint, and it looks just like the H2D, I mean, come on, this looks good. Up here we have the Panda Nomi 3D, which differentiates from the Panda Nomi because is guess what 3d and it has some new characters and a bunch of new animations on there and i didn't even show you all of them not even close to all this is more of a you're just gonna have to throw it on your printer and wait and see what it shows kind of thing the panda nomi also shows the progress of your prints if you have any print errors anything like that so it's also a great way to get some information at a glance then we have the panda cooler up here in the top left which did not have to kick in for this print because it was literally like a 15 minute print so there was no need for that thing to kick in and really cool anything down in there but it is lighting up how it's supposed to and it is at the ready if it needs to cool do i think the fan is a necessity i'm gonna leave that one up to you and let me know in the comments what you think about that it's not a parts cooling fan so it's not necessarily going to increase the quality of your prints but it is going to cool down those internal stepper motors which should prolong the life of your printer theoretically and these lights that it comes with at the bottom just remind me of of like an airplane about to take off or something. Overall, I hope I gave you all a very clear and not biased opinion on my first impressions and what I think of these upgrades from Big Tree Tech. I know that they are mostly cosmetic, but sometimes cosmetic is what's needed to just make your printer stand apart or pretend that you have an H2D when you really don't, in my case. Either way, I want you to draw your own conclusions from these upgrades and let me know in the comments what those conclusions are, what you think of these upgrades, if you're going to pick up any of them, and if you just like this style of video, which I really hope you did because there's going to be a QNS and X1C version of this video coming out real soon, so let's just hope that you did like this style and you watched that one too. As always, I don't want to make you subscribe, I just hope you had a good time watching me upgrade this a1 and give it a little bit more of that fancy flair to it before we go we cannot leave without thanking the channel members the channel members these are some really important people that make sure that these videos come out that's it if you want to see your name on screen click that join button but again you don't have to and whether you like this video or you didn't like this video i just hope that you have a great rest of your day and that i will see you later in a future video